In this video series, our goal is to populate autocomplete text view, as you see here on this screen, with data from the internet, JSON formatted data. So far, we've found our source data. Our source data is here from plantplaces.com. You see this is JSON formatted data, where the very last term is a search term. I can switch red bud to oak if I wish, or anything else like that. We've created our DTO, our data transfer object, which represents the data that we're reading in from JSON. We haven't parsed the JSON yet, but that will come soon enough. We've created our interface in our stub. We've created our async task, all in previous videos. Now we're going to work on the implementation. Specifically, we're going to work on a network DAO. Now, we want to think about this carefully. One of the tasks that we want to do with our Android program is access this URL and get back this data. Now that last term might change, it might be oak, maybe maple, or even a, uh, a, even a scientific name like uh, Acer or Quercus or anything like that. So that part will change on this URL, but if we abstract this away several levels, it is string in, string out. So this is the string that's our input, this is our string that's our output. We can reuse that concept of string in, string out in several different places. So let's not tie this too closely to the concept of our autocomplete text. Let's make a special purpose class, or actually more or less a general purpose class, that takes a string in, that string is going to be a URL, and then it's going to give us a string in return, and that string is going to be uh, the data that's at that URL. So for this, we're going to take advantage of some Apache libraries that are included within Android. And the syntax here is a little bit goofy. It only requires about five lines to make this class, to make this method we're going to make. It's just a confusing syntax, but it's not a whole lot of work to be honest with you. So I'm gonna right click on my DAO package, choose new Java class, and I'm gonna call this network DAO a very generic name to indicate, hey, we just want to pass data in, get data back. Network DAO, I'm going to, I'm going to say uh, public string request string URI, okay? Open curly and close curly and save. And so, uh, I'll put some Java doc above this that says uh, 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 execute or navigate to the given URI and return the data from that URI. Okay, URI, the universal resource indicator for a set of data. In other words, like a URL return the set of data provided by the URI. Okay, so now we're gonna use some of these Apache libraries, but first, let's satisfy our uh, return our return agreement here because we say we're gonna return a string and it's gonna be mad at us until we return that string. So I'll say string, return string equals, and then we'll just make it a blank string for the moment, give myself some space, and then say return, return string. Okay, uh, now what we'll do is we will say, uh, we'll, we'll start to use these HTTP, these Apache libraries. Okay, first of all, we have to think how we want to call this URI. And if you take a look here, what we've done is we've put our search term in the URL. Okay, so that's what we call a get request. If I go to plantplaces.com, and I search on Redbud, watch what's going to happen up in the address bar when I search on Redbud. You see that the search term appears right there in the address bar, and that's what we call a get request. Now, uh, a post request is where we do something like upload a photo, or where we do something like log on to online banking, where we don't want our username and password in plain text. So get request is ideal if we want to have something like search results that we want to send to our friend. So I can take this URL, I can open a brand new window, paste the URL, I'm going to get the exact same search results. A get request is ideal for that. 
A post request is ideal when we don't want that data up here in the address bar where it might get cached in our history or where we need to submit something that's not just text-based data. So in this case, I'm going to use a GET request. And the uh, Apache class that's going to help me here is called HTTP GET. So I'm going to say HTTP GET, HTTP GET equals new HTTP GET. And I'm going to pass in the URI. It simply says, OK, invoke this URI using a GET request. I'll enter to uh, automatically organize inputs. Now, I'm going to need to uh, figure out what data I get back from this GET request. So I'm going to say response handler. And it requires a generic argument, so I'm going to say I'm going to get back string data, response handler. Now notice, by the way, uh, while these names are the same, notice the capitalization is different. Fairly common with Java. Uh, the class name will be what we call Pascal case. In other words, the starting letter of each word is uppercase, where the variable names are camel case. The first word is entirely lowercase. Lower case. Thereafter, each word starts with an uppercase letter. So these aren't necessarily the same. Uh, this is the type, and this is the variable name. This is the type, and this is the variable name. OK, so request handler equals new basic, uh, sorry, response handler, basic response handler. Terminate with a semicolon. This just says, I am the person who knows how to handle what I get back from this URL request. OK. Uh, and now what I need to do is I need to marry these two things together. I do that with something called an HTTP client. So I'm going to say HTTP client, and then we'll say uh, HTTP client, keeping with our uh, naming syntax, equals new default HTTP client. Now, where did I get these names? You know, like anything, I looked them up off the Internet. Don't worry too much about which is which. I mentioned it's about five lines to do this. Um, don't get too caught up in what all these different words are. Just know that we're receiving a URI, we're returning the results, that's all that's important. Okay, HTTP client is now going to marry together our get and our response handler. So we'll say HTTP client.execute, and I'm going to say HTTP get and response handler. Okay. Uh, and what I'm going to do with this then is I'm going to control alt v which will assign that to a new local variable and that new local variable I'm going to call return string. Wait, I already made a local variable called return string, didn't I? I did. So I no longer need this this uh, variable I declared up top. I just wanted to resolve my red line. Okay. Now let's see, I mouse over and I see unhandled exceptions. We'll take care of that in just a moment, but let me add some comments while I'm here. I'm going to say use the get method, which which posts the search, I shouldn't say post, which um, submits the search terms in the URL. Okay. How to handle response data. Okay. And then marry the request and the response. Okay, now uh, what we're going to see here is unhandled exceptions, Java IO exception and client protocol exception. Stop for a moment here. A lot of people are tempted to do this. Alt enter, surround with try catch, and then either leave it empty or e print stack trace. Don't do that. Don't do that because what you're doing now is you're returning essentially a null return string that's going to lead you to a null pointer exception later. Null pointer exceptions don't tell you anything. They're not informative at all. What you're throwing away here by doing nothing is you're throwing away a very informative exception. Okay? So why would you get that exception? You would get that exception because you don't have network data at this point, and that could happen at any time. You could have your phone in an elevator and you could lose network connection. Uh, if you return a null and you get a null pointer exception, that's going to crash your program and your user is not going to like that. That's going to be a bad usability, uh, bad design. What you should do, at worst case, is inform the user, say, hey, you're not connected to a network, please try again when you're connected. But you can't do that from this method, uh, from this class, because this class is not an activity, it's not running on the UI thread. 
what you need to do is you need to send a message back to the UI thread and let it decide how to handle it. We send that message back by re-throwing the exception. So don't wrap this with a try catch and either leave the catch block empty or uh, do a print stack trace. Throw the exception back because at this point in this class we don't have enough information uh, to know how to handle the exception. So add exceptions to method signature. Uh, that's, that's what we want to do here. Now we're telling the method that calls us, hey, if the network's unavailable, I'm going to let you know and you have to decide what to do with it. Now, about a minute ago, I said, at worst case, inform the user. What's a better option? A better option is find another way around it and let the program still run. In other words, maybe I'm trying to get live data. Do I have a local copy? If I have a network exception, why don't I just toggle over and use a locally cached copy of data? And it's entirely invisible to the user. The user doesn't know this. Uh, we're just saying, okay, well, I don't have network data now. I'm going to flop over and, and use cache data. And, and that, that work, that's how the real plant places uh, mobile app works. The plant data is stored offline, so you can GPS plants and take photos of plants where you don't have data coverage. Uh, you can still look up those plants because they're saved locally. Uh, and then you can synchronize them later. So we want to think about this. But the, the, the real thing is we don't just want to throw away exception. It feels annoying if you're a programmer to constantly have to deal with exceptions. But really, it's an opportunity for us to improve the quality of our program by deciding how to deal with these exceptions. So this is our network DAO. Uh, in the next step, we're going to wire this up to our implementation class, and then we'll wire that up to our user interface. That won't take too much time, but we'll go ahead and cover that in our very next video in the sequence on the playlist. Thank you.